So yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Arnaud Hange. Uh, I'm uh, French. Um, nobody's perfect. Uh, I'm a biomedical engineer working at the European Agency, Space Agency since uh, 2004. I graduated from uh, biomedical engineering school in France, actually quite close from Strasbourg. It's uh, in uh, Besançon in the east of France. And I was approached to talk to you about uh, the perspective of surgery for, for space applications, and I'm very glad to have this, uh, this opportunity. Um, why? Because, I mean, um, ESA is mainly a technical organization, therefore we have a technical language, and, uh, yeah, his work is uh, often presented, uh, uh, let's say, from the, the technical angle, and therefore for people that are outside the space business, it's always a bit uh, difficult to um, to understand word jargon, especially that, yeah, since it's full of acronyms like uh, ISS for International Space Station or the ARTES program or the ECSS standards, which are probably something unknown to you. But the same, on the other hand, can be said for the medical domain. We have many people working at ESA that have, uh, let's say, a system engineering background or telecom engineering, and they have no clue about transluminal surgery or anatomopathology or or chronic obstruct obstructive uh, pulmonary disease. So, uh, I mean, uh, there is a gap in terms of communication between the, the, the space and the medical world, and I'm very happy to have this uh, opportunity to, to make a bridge between these two domains. So, first, you, you might wonder what is a space agency doing in the field of health, and that's uh, what you have on the, first, uh, on the first slide. We are interested at ESA uh, in health for our astronauts first, because, of course, space is a very uh, tricky environment. It's the most extreme case of isolation when you are uh, uh, surrounded by the space vacuum, uh, very cold temperature, far from, from Earth. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, an easy place to live. And uh, when you have missions that uh, trigger, I mean, a lot of involvement from the engineers, from the, the people working there in this field, and that you have an abortion of the mission due to health uh, issues, that's, um, that's very poorly accepted, especially when you know that the launch of a space shuttle was kind of ha around half a billion of dollars. I mean, you don't want to have a mission stopped because one of the, the crew members is sick. Uh, on top of that, among the crew, there is not always a um, medical doctor, a true medical doctor. All the, the crew members have a basic uh, first aid training, but not uh, systematically there is a medical doctor on board. So there is a need for ESA to develop technologies uh, for the prevention and the management of emergencies. But ESA is also working on, on health uh, with, let's say, terrestrial objectives. That's the case in particular of uh, telemedicine via satellite. But we have other applications that I'm going to describe uh, uh, later. And uh, yeah, telemedicine is, the, let's say, the most visible one. And we, we work on telemedicine with the, let's say, the paradigm of uh, moving people, uh, moving knowledge, sorry, and, um, and data rather than, than people. Uh, so we, in, we had had a, a great number of activities in different dom domains of health. In total, we had more than 130 projects. And I've pointed out on the slide the, uh, the dedicated website where you can find a, a good overview, I think, of all what we have been doing. Uh, on the next slide, you find the uh, ESA's expertise uh, that is relevant to, to health. So we have two approaches. The one is, uh, let's say, a classical vertical approach, which goes um, across the, the different expertise we have here. And it's mostly technology driven. So for instance, uh, we use satellite communications to transmit medical data. Um, we use Earth observation, and we have uh, the possibility to create predictive risk maps uh, for epidemiology. We use uh, the GPS, of course, and uh, the positioning uh, features to, to track, for instance, the delivery of, the delivery of medications uh, in uh, sub-Saharan countries. Uh, we have also the technologies that are developed for the human space flight, so with the astronauts. Uh, we do core te technology development, so, which can be used for either space or terrestrial applications. And we have also a business development uh, section that works on technology transfer. But we also have a, a more horizontal, more transversal approach, especially through the RTS20 project, which is uh, uh, a, a program that uh, requires to combine different space assets, for instance, using uh, Earth observation data or technologies developed for manned space flight in conjunction with, for instance, satellite communications. And I will show you later on uh, an example of this, uh, of this kind of projects.